I'm not sure why, but I thought that this is the appropriate way to start this video. This is Mr. Whiskers. Thought maybe Jayton might see that. Today we're going to talk about nuclear chemistry. Um, first of all, uh, this is in chapter 19. Seems like kind of a strange thing to do after chapter 3, but it kind of goes together with what we just learned about the nucleus. So we're going to talk about uh, nuclear chemistry. And what nuclear chemistry involves is changes in the nucleus. I don't know if you can read that. It says changes in the nucleus. And it results from unstable nuclei. Whenever a nucleus is unstable, uh, the proton-neutron arrangement in it, it's just not real uh, stable. It's not real happy. It doesn't want to be like that. So it changes in some way. You know a word already. To describe these things, the word is radioactive. When things are unstable, when a nucleus is unstable, it is said to be radioactive. That is one of the vocab words in the uh, chapter. And so, <clears throat> just a little bit of a, a description. There are many ways that uh, changes in the nucleus can happen, but there are two that we're really going to focus on today. These are kind of the most common ones that we talk about the most. Um, and they involve um, these two examples. So imagine, if you will, that we have a nucleus right here, which has one, two, three, four. Uh, the black ones are protons and the white ones are neutrons. We have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven protons. So as we learned before, that number, the atomic number, the Z number, should go on the bottom. It has one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve neutrons. So the mass number is 12 plus 11, which is 23. So this would be sodium. This would be sodium number 11 on our periodic table. And so uh, first of all, I need to let you know that this example we're going through isn't a real example. This isn't something that would actually happen, I don't think. But it illustrates the point. Most of the times what we're going to see here happens with really large nuclei, and I just didn't want to have to draw all those protons and neutrons. But <clears throat> so that's... Uh, sodium-23. And what we'll see happens over here, due to some sort of instability in this nucleus, we're ignoring the electrons, of course, just talking about the protons and the neutrons, it's going to change. And what it's going to do, one of the most common things for unstable radioactive nuclei to do is to kick out two protons and two neutrons. They just kind of leave. If you count those up, then now instead of having 11 protons, we should have 9. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. Where do those other two go? Well, they're over here in this other particle that got shot out. It's no longer part of that nucleus. And it also shot out two neutrons. So instead of having 12, we should have 10. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10 neutrons. And so this guy now is not sodium-23 anymore. It is... Uh, well, it's got nine protons, and it's got uh, ten neutrons, so its mass is 19. So if we look at the periodic table, number nine uh, would be fluorine. Again, not a real example, but this is exactly how you would work this if it did happen. So what is this thing that got kicked out? Well, if we examine it, it has two protons. It has two neutrons, so its mass is four. And so, just like any other nucleus, we have a new nucleus now here with two protons. So, atomic number two is helium. So this is actually a helium nucleus that we have shot out. That helium nucleus, since it's so common to shoot that out of an unstable radioactive isotope, we give it a name. We call that an alpha, alpha particle. So we call this alpha decay, the kind of decay, this nucleus breaks apart, it decays into these other two nuclei, and in doing so it kicks out an alpha particle. And so alpha, the Greek letter alpha looks kind of like a, a fish, sort of, it should be a little bit maybe more, uh, yeah, maybe more squatty and pushed together more circu circular, but think of kind of drawing a fish as an alpha particle. So that's one kind of radioactive decay. Another <coughs> really common one that we need to know about is uh, illustrated in this next example. We have 
six protons and eight neutrons. So if we draw that uh, nuclear symbol, we would see that its symbol would look like this. And what happens over here is we count these up and we see that what's happened is we now have uh, seven protons. Even though it didn't absorb any protons, somehow it got a seventh. Well, if we count up the neutrons, we'll see that it, we did have eight, but now we have seven. So the mass is still 14. So we start with a mass of 14, we end with a mass of 14. So really, nothing moved, nothing came in or out in terms of protons or neutrons. So what did happen? Well, if we look right here, this guy was a neutron, and now he's a proton. So a neutron is sort of changed into a proton. And in order to do that, it has to, um, if you think of a neutral thing, you can think of it this way, think of a neutral thing as having kind of a proton and a, an electron smushed together into one particle, which we call a neutron. And if you could sort of magically remove that negative part of it, what would be left would be positive. And that's kind of what we're uh, doing here. We're having one of these neutrons become a proton, but in doing so it has to shoot out an electron. And that electron that it shoots out, we call that a beta particle, which uh, the symbol for that's kind of a big squiggly B like that. And <clears throat> so that is the symbol for a beta particle, uh, the nuclear symbol for a beta particle, and that's kind of the algebraic symbol. Same here. This is a symbol of an alpha particle, and that's the algebraic symbol. So those are a couple of... Uh, definition is the third kind of particle that we're going to want to know about is the gamma particle. It's not really a particle at all. It's, it's more of a, a wave. We'll talk more about that later. But the third symbol that you need to know about is a gamma. And gammas are released all the time. Whenever an alpha, uh, alpha decay happens, gamma is released. Whenever beta particle, uh, when a beta emission happens, gamma particles are released. They're released all the time. And so you could always have a plus a gamma, you know, gammas coming off of all of these. And the symbol for a gamma is this, <coughs> uh, can you see, oh, can't see that on the video, I'll move it over here. So the gamma symbol would look like this, sort of, uh, kind of like a, a, well, you might look it up in the book if you're not real, real sure what that, how what that's supposed to look like. It's kind of a squiggly little something like that. Um, and gamma particles, by the way, do not have a charge, no protons, and they also don't have a mass, so uh, they don't, they're real easy to come up with their numbers. And so that's the gamma. <clears throat> and so those are, that's a quick introdu introduction to the basic three types of uh, things that come out of nuclear decay. In the next video, we'll talk about how to write a reaction write a nuclear reaction using these terms.